Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent HD show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And we are at patch 10.5 right now. Some uh, small changes that have been made to a couple of cards, but uh, today we're not going to actually be looking at any of those because uh, we're going to go into a little square tail deck that I like to call the Dancing Dwarves. It's a bit of a variation on the Dwarves archetype with a little bit more control and also the Gorilla Tactics leader ability, which is very unusual. But this is a creation by Team Elderblood, an internal creation that I'd like to share with you today. So the Dancing Dwarves is a very, very cool, a very powerful deck as well that uses a bit of the Gorilla Tactics uh, leader ability in combination with Milva, in combination, of course, with the power of the new dwarves, which is very, very, very good. Um, it's a really aggressive deck. We're uh, here to aim for a lot of damage and a few uh, high-powered hits as well, so with Erendite and the Ornate Sensor. Um, we're going to be going through the entire deck card by cards, just explaining every single card away and a little bit of the combos beforehand. But if you're not interested in that, as usual, you can skip right to the example matches using the timeline down below. And below that timeline, in the description, you can also find this deck through the link to the Play Gwent website. And you can uh, also upvote it there if you export it to your own game. So you can try it out for yourself. So uh, I think that basically says it all and uh, we're gonna go through the cards. So first up, we have the Dwarven Skirmisher, got a bit of a buff. Uh, starts at one power for four provisions and on deploy, if you put him on the melee row, you damage an enemy unit by three. If that unit survives, you gain one armor. Then on order, if he still has armor, you can damage an enemy unit by three. Again, basically giving you uh, seven points, six points of damage uh, and a single bit of armor, which is, yeah, definitely, definitely really good. Remember, we're not using the um, the Dwarven Mahakam Forge, Forge leader ability, so our Dwarves do not have armor out of their own right, uh, but still, most of the Dwarves will actually have armor just innate. Then we have a Squirrel again. I think I said this in the previous video as well. Squirrel is the MVP still, because there are so many Echo cards. There's always something you can banish, uh, especially since we're also seeing a lot of Rage of the Sea decks, uh, we can banish that Ryogal. So, uh, Squirrel, 4 power for 4 provisions, banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. Simple as that. And then two Dwarf Berserkers. Dwarf Berserkers are basically the crux of this deck. 4 power for 4 provisions has 3 armor, and as long as this unit is armored up, at the end of your turn, you damage yourself by once so you've taken away 1 bit of armor, and then damage a random enemy unit by 1. So a damage engine, as long as there's armor, and we have quite a few ways to keep applying armor as well. Then a minor, one of those uh, cards that can actually apply armor. So four power for four provisions, and on order you boost an allied unit by two, so you need to wait a turn. But if it's a dwarf, you also give that unit four armor, which is quite significant, especially in combination with another card that is in this deck. Then double making a bomb, of course, since we're using Milva, making a bomb um, is very, very powerful. So you move an enemy unit to the other row and give it bleeding for four turns. If it's the only unit on that row, you damage it by four instead. Meaning that with Milva, Milva will pop out, damage that unit again by one, and then you can kill it if it's a six power unit just in one go. So uh, something that most people do not uh, expect that their six power units, if they play that first, could be in danger of getting destroyed. You could even go as far as adding another two damage on by using one of your leader ability charges and then you can kill something up to eight points. Then the Dwarven Chariot got an even bigger buff than it already had because Dwarven Chariot was already a very powerful card. A three power and one armor for five provisions. If you put him on the melee row, he will boost himself by four and gain two armor. If you put it on the ranged row, you spawn, which is what we're going to be doing. You spawn two Rowdy Dwarves on your melee row. Rowdy Dwarves are two power, one armor tokens that are also Dwarves. Um, and on order, this uh, chariot also gives an allied unit one armor that you can choose every single turn. So this is one of those cards that will allow us to protect our units along the way. Then the Cat Witcher Saboteur. So five power for five provisions on deploy. You move an enemy unit to the leftmost position on its row and damage it by one. And you increase the damage by one for every card it passes. So if there's three cards on the row, you select the rightmost card. It will pass two cards, so it will be damaged by three. This will also trigger Milva. 
Milva will damage that card again and hopefully you should have a uh, one power unit that Milva can destroy afterwards. Usually plays for a lot more than just the eight points that you'd expect from a five provision card. So this is why this card is included. Now we have double armorer's workshop. It boosts three adjacent units by two and gives them two armor. So especially with the dwarves, this is very powerful indeed. There's two of them in the deck, just as with making a bomb, because we also have Simlas in the deck, so we could play both of them at once if we want to. Then the Arcane Tome is just a backup tutor, basically, for any of our special cards. So on order, this is an artifact card. You play a special card from your deck and then move yourself to the opposite row, meaning that it goes to your opponent's side of the board. They can then choose to use it as well, or not use it and then it will destroy itself. If they use it, it comes back to you and you can play another special card. Pretty fun card in the fact that it is also tinning, um, but also gives your opponent a chance to tin if they want to. And this can go back and forth as long as both players actually use it. Then Zoltan's Company is a nature card for six provisions where you spawn two rowdy dwarves on an allied row and you increase the number of spawned rowdy dwarves by one for each Zoltan in your starting deck. We have two of the three, so we will be spawning four Rowdy Dwarfs, which is Scarred, which is an eight for six with four armor. Definitely a good choice. Then Nickus is just here to get some tempo. Since we have Arendite in the deck, we need to be off top uh, points wise at the end of every single turn. So Nickus, three power and one armor for seven provisions. And uh, this unit may raid the battlefield to aid you in battle. So you need to mulligan this card away every single time. And then at a random point in the match, Nickus will jump out and be on the battlefield as well for those three extra points. Then Dennis Cranmer, seven power for seven provisions. And on deploy, you boost adjacent units by an amount equal to their armor, which can be quite a lot. This card usually goes for around 15 points um, if you're not really focusing on it. Um, and if you have a plan for it, this can go even higher because of course there are a few cards that just keep applying armor. So a uh, very powerful finisher even. Then Ornate Sensor, one of the new cards as well, where we swap the power of the highest and lowest power unit on the battlefield. You, This is a dangerous card, of course. Um, if you're not in possession of the lowest enemy unit, uh, the lowest unit, then the boosts will not go to your side of the board. It does not uh, respect the boundaries between players, so this will always just swap highest and lowest power unit on the battlefield regardless of owner. Likewise, for if you own the biggest card on the board, of course, then you will lose those points to the lowest unit, wherever it is. Um, so sometimes it's probably better to leave this card out, depending on the matchup. Then our Zoltan, our first Zoltan, Zoltan Chive, 4 power and 4 armor for 9 provisions. And on deploy you boost adjacent dwarves by 2, which is only 8 points of course, but this card also has resilience, meaning that it will stay on the board until the next round. Um, which means that you have a little bit of carryover, so the 4 points of carryover if you want to. Then Arendite. Arendite bears, well, needs a little bit of an explanation. So it's also one of the new cards. It's an echo card, meaning that if you played it once, it will go back to the top of your deck at the start of the next round, where you damage an enemy unit by zero and then boost the lowest power allied unit by the excess damage dealt. That of course is very low, but at the end of your turn, if you have more points than your opponent, you increase the damage by one wherever this card is. It's a bit of a controversial card because um, one, you don't necessarily need to hit something big, uh, you get the remaining points regardless, so this card always gives you the points that it says it will give you. But on the other side, I need to get rid of my cat and she says hi, hi. Um, on the other side, that also means that if you start the game on blue coin, you have a huge advantage because you always have a way of uh, staying on top. And of course, you also have the stratagem giving you a bit of an advantage in that first round regardless. So you should be always be on top of your opponent. On the other side, if you start at red coin, you're gonna have a really tough time getting over your opponent every single round uh, because of that same advantage that they have. So, uh, which means that this nine provision card, which is quite costly, could also turn out pretty badly. You don't need to have this card in hand to get it boosted, so that's not important. Uh, the only important thing is that you just stay on top. Now Royal Decree is just another tutor card in this deck where we play a unit from your deck, just in case if you're missing any of your goals. I got really lucky with my uh, um, exercise matches with this. I rarely needed Royal Decree because I had all my goals in hand. Speaking of which, this is a goal that you don't do not want to have in your hand. So Milva Sharpshooter jumps out of the deck every time you move an enemy unit. 
and she will shoot that unit by one damage. And then you need to kill something of one power with her order ability for her to jump back into the deck. If you don't, then of course she's either at risk of getting destroyed or if you've used the order ability and didn't kill anything, she will never be able to jump out of the deck again. So uh, something you'll have to keep in mind, but with our leader ability, we can always kill some four power uh, engine card. So that should in most cases not be a problem. Then Simlas, as we said before, Simlas is a two power for 12 provision card where you play all copies of a bronze special card from your deck. So that's either going to be making a bomb or the armory. And then our hefty dwarves, Munro Broys is the first one, six power for uh, 12 provisions with a little bit of armor. And Zeal on his order ability with three charges where you transform one allied rowdy dwarf into a dwarf berserker. So remember the guys that ping damage off their armor. Uh, you can do that three times. So basically giving you nine extra points if all of those rowdy dwarves were up to uh, one power. So that gives you uh, already 15 points. But of course the dwarf berserkers also give you another nine points in damage. And you can just keep that going with the armor. So... Probably one of the most powerful cards in this deck. And then his buddy Zoltan Warrior is also here, so 4 power and 1 armor for 13 provisions. And on deploy you damage 2 enemy units by 3. And for each unit that survived you spawn another Rowdy Dwarf in this row. Um, and he also has the same ability as the, the uh, Berserkers, he, except for the fact that he doesn't damage himself. So as long as this card has armor, even just a little bit, you will damage a random enemy unit at the end of your turn by one. And then our stratagem is just tactical advantage for one, so we boost an allied unit by five. And of course our leader ability, Guerrilla Tactics, move the unit to the other row. If it's an enemy, damage it by two. If it's an ally, boost it by two instead. And you can do this three times. If you do this on an enemy, of course, remember that Milva will pop out, so you need to be able to kill it or something close by. And that's basically it. Let's show off how powerful this deck really is, especially in the current meta, because we have a lot of uh, options to also keep uh, Sihil decks uh, at bay, uh, which we'll probably see some of in a minute. And our first opponent is one such... Um, hmm, yeah, this is going to be one such deck, I think. Onslaught, which means pirates. It also means armor, so we're gonna have to take uh, care about that. Let's get rid of Milva, of course, always the card that you mulligan away. And then other than that, this is looking pretty okay. I could get the Cat Witcher Saboteur out, um, but since we have Simnos, I need to get rid of either the Armorer's Workshop or making a bomb. I'm gonna get rid of Armorer's Workshop and that is fine. So there's a few cards that you can easily start with. If you're starting on blue coin, um, the Dwarven Chariot is always a good way to go. If you're not, then the Dwarf Berserker is also a good way to go since you start pinging off damage as well. Uh, especially right now, because we're not starting. Um, and we get the Uncrate Longship first. So there are ways for us to deal with this, but we can't kill it since it's at 4. I think the Dwarven Chariot has armor of its own. So I might as well use it now. There we go. And that leaves us on top as well, so Erendite will go to 1. Which is, remember, that's what we're trying to do here. Um, I think making a bomb might be useless now. So, I'm gonna put down the Dwarf Berserker, that's gonna keep us on top. It's also hitting the armor, and I'm just gonna armor it up again. So we definitely get that first ping. It's sadly going to the right instead of going to the left, because I wanted to kill that uh, longship. And there we get, yeah. Primal Savagery on the Chariot. I could use making a bomb on the Bear Abomination. Because again, if I do it on the Uncrate Longship, it will die because of Milva's damage. Uh, so I'm just going to use the making a bomb on the Bear Abomination and then hit that from here. There we go. Still ahead, still pinging away with the Berserker. And now we hit the, um, the Longship there. But it might be now protected with the tactical advantage. It's something that I would do at the very least. I'm not sure if this is a Sihil deck, because usually Onslaught just focuses on pirates. Okay, so we're getting the damage there, which is good, because now we can use the leader ability. Yeah, we're going to use the leader ability on the longship. So that's taking that away. This doesn't um, get played, so it doesn't also get pinged by the longship. Uh, and now I'm gonna put down... I need to play five more points. What's the special card that I can play here? I could play Ornate Sensor, that would swap out the 11 points 
with something else. Well, let's do it now. I can as well. It's gonna give, give us a big swing. So there we go, ornate sensor. And that's swapping out the power of Holger with one of our dwarves. And then we get the use of um, the arcane tome, which is giving us the bleeding on the rowdy dwarf and yet another longship that actually gets boosted this time. And we get the Uncreate Raiders on top of that. Ah, that's fine, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna use the Arcane Zone to use Making a Bomb again. And there we go. I was scared that the Arcane Zone might not give it damage there, but it did, it did. And then we can put the, uh, the Dwarf Berserker over here and get some more things off of that. 12 points ahead still, so our Erendite is really, really growing a lot. And we get another Primal Savagery there, and that kills the Berserker, sadly. Um, just thinking, I think I can actually kill that Bear Abomination. And that's gonna kill... Ooh, it's just hitting that, instead of trying to kill the Rowdy Dwarf. We get the Twirsock Invader. And that kills off our Dwarf. Could do Royal Decree. I'm actually going to, I think. Um... So Royal Decree into uh, Zoltan Chive, giving us that Resilience unit. And then I'm going to use the Cat Witcher Saboteur. I need to count this out. I think I need to go for the Bear Abomination. Don't worry. This there it goes. And then Milva hits it and we can kill. Ah, oh, we could have killed Holger actually. Yeah, that's fine. We're still ahead. I can use Erendite as well. So that's, yeah, killed by Stunning Blow. There we go, another Gutting Slash. At least they're getting out of the way, the Gutting Slashes. And now we need to get another hit there. Because otherwise they would have been ahead. Um, or, or I wouldn't have been ahead anymore. So Miner, uh, since it's not that much of a problem here. Um, I could use the Leader Ability again, since they've been using it as well. I'll do it just so I can kill uh, Holger. I want to be able to kill Holger here, and I'm going to leave the Arcane Tome B. There we go. I think we've thinned enough of our opponent's deck, and we can still use Erendite now. Or even in the next round. And then we get another veteran there. And we're going to get another hit of Onslaught, I think. Yeah, there we go. It goes again. But that just means I can Erendite... I need Sultan's Company for later on. So I'm just gonna Erendite on the Twirsock Invader here. And that gives us another boost on the Miner, and then I can boost the Rowdy Dwarf over here with some other uh, armor. I mean, I'm in the comfortable position right now. Our opponent still needs to play their cards. Ooh, that was seven damage on that Gutting Slash. Um, I mean, I could use double Armorer's Workshop here. Just to thin my deck out even further. Um, it does I think it's too much. I think I've I've cleaned out my opponent's deck enough. I could still go over. How many Rowdy Dwarfs? I could still get the Rowdy Dwarfs, so I'm just gonna add a bunch more Rowdy Dwarfs. <laughs> I wanna get that final card out of our opponent's hand. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's even better. So we're uh, stopping at equal here. And that means we get two more turns that also tick on Erendite. So I think I'm probably good. There's no Onslaught anymore. I don't need this. If I can get Munro Breus out, I'm almost guaranteed to win here. No, it's the Squirrel. It's the Squirrel. There's nothing I need to actually banish here. Which is good. I'm just going to pass and then we're going into the final round with card advantage. Um, but we're playing constantly armored up units, so I don't think this is going to be a problem in the slightest. So Erendite is at 10. Could probably be a bit higher. I really want Munro Bryce. Yeah, our mulligans are pretty clear, so we need to get rid of Milva. And the Squirrel. Okay, that's good. We don't get Munro, sadly. Um, so this is the one card that we're missing. <laughs> and our armorous workshops are there as well, so it's it's fine. It's fine, we won't have the damage pings that we're used to, but it's it's fine. Jenge as a start. That's good. I'm gonna have to go with Dwarven Chariot here first. Uh, I'm probably gonna get hit on the Chariot here, but it's not that much of a problem. I have plenty of armored uh, cards here. Then the 
Skirmisher is gonna give us eight points, and our opponent is also gonna get eight points. That's not what I want, is it? No, I wanna be ahead. So, Zoltan hits and hits. And then we can arm him up as well, and he's gonna do another hit because of his passive ability. Hopefully on the ship. There we go. And then we got the Terror of the Seas killing, yeah, Sultan there. That's fine. It's fine. Um, let's put the Skirmisher down, like this. And then I need to focus on what I'm actually giving armor here. I'm gonna start putting armor on the Skirmisher. Because, of course, we still have Dennis in our hands. So if I can boost at least one unit with a lot of armor, then that's going to be A-OK, -okay, isn't it? Isn't it, Governor? Then we got Lady of the Lake with an Echo Cart into Blood Eagle. That's going to hit the Chariot, I'm assuming. No. Ooh. Ooh, we get Dirgvi. Okay, that's going to be funny. So I'm just going to armor up the Chariot, because I don't think this Rupture Bypass... Oh. Does Rupture bypass bleeding? Uh, bypass armor? I don't think it does. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's going to arm it up with uh, Double Armageddon's Workshop? But there we go. Won our first match. So with this deck, even on red coin, and there we have... That's definitely going to be Sihil. Okay. This is going to be interesting. So Sihil decks try to get as small of a unit as possible on our side of the board so they can kill it with Sihil. Um, I'm, at, I'm at red coin again, so this is not good. And I have both Armory's Workshops in our hand. Which is also not good, because I can only get rid of one. So what we're gonna try and do is not have one power units on our side of the board, but... We do. But our deck is actually perfectly handling this, because uh, our opponent will not try to use Sihil right away, which is weird to me. Um, the only problem is that we won't have any um, value for um, Erendite. So there's two options that it, we could go around doing this. We could Ornate Sensor immediately, giving us a 20 point shift. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use Armor's Workshop first. Is that just uh, armors up those sirens? And they can't use Sihil now, because Sihil needs a one power target. There we go. Thank you for the compliment, opponent. And then we get Gert. Gert is going to add another one power Siren. Um, and this is the time that I use Ornate Sensor. There we go. And now we are ahead, so Erendite is getting boosted. And then the Ankrej Longship. Um, we'll start with the Berserker again. Um... I'm going to actually move, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Because I've seen this deck in play a few times already. Um, and what they do is they remove the Doomed from Arniel so they can play him again. But now the Doomed was still there, so he's killed. And they don't get, yeah, I should have moved that first. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's what I wanted to show off. This deck just perfectly counters uh, Sahil decks. Because of the Armory's Workshop, it just, it just knackers them down. Okay, next one. And next up we have... Yet the same deck, I think. <laughs> Another patricidal time. fury, bro. Or sister, I don't know. Uh, we do get the advantage this time, which is good. Although I don't see units that I really want to play. I want to see some chariots here, damn it. Um, this is going to be good. I can get rid of blood eagles. Arcane tome. Do I want to give our opponent the arcane tome? I do not want to. Yeah, there we go. Chariot. Uh, this is also not that useful in this deck, and then Milva also needs to go. Oh, Snickers. Too bad, too bad. Uh, let's start with this, because our opponent, again, wants to see a one power unit. As long as we don't give them that one power unit, this is going to be fine, and we have tactical advantage to counter that, uh, I'll do I, although I do not have... Yeah, I do not have the um, the good cards this time, I should have kept Arcane Tome. On Aeromancy into, and this player actually uses Sihil immediately, which seems to me like the better option. Because you can just go for it immediately. Um, Sihil now, is does this actually count as an order ability? Yeah, it didn't increase, so that's the reason why most players do not use Sihil immediately. Because it didn't increase this way. I'm just thinking, I can armor up one of them, and then give tactical advantage to the other. I can, yeah, I can banish on Aeromancy. And I'm still going to be on top, so... 
replenish on Aeromancy out of the way. And normally every single damage engine that they want to pull off is going to be movable by me. Guess we'll see soon enough, but right now we're still in the advantage. We get the entire crew axe, but that's only two points. Uh, I don't want to make too big of a row here. Because uh, if I do, I'm going to lose out. I still can play Simnos, actually, with um, the Kree. So if, if I really need to, I can take care of this. Sad that Nikus is in my hand here, but yeah, I need to get this first round to me. But do I really don't want to overdo it. Let's just do it. So I'm Kreed. Warlord, there we go. And then armor up the uh, Deafening Siren again. Damage an enemy unit by two, so that's... Still not Sihil wise, and I'm pretty sure this is a Sihil deck. I could Monro, uh, but I don't think it's necessary just yet. I could Sultan just to get a bit of carry over there and forcing them to go beyond those seven cards because I think that's what they're going for here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put um, Sultan in between here. There we go. And that still keeps hitting. And that's gonna hit. Ooh, okay. I do not want to leave that on the board. Um, I also have Dennis here, so what I'm thinking is just playing Simlas already. Um, I still have the remaining combo. Um, I need to get Erendite as high as possible, so I'm gonna play the Simlas combo. So Royal Decree into Simlas um, and do double Armadur's Workshop. Uh, so here, here. Simulus is still at two power, but that's something else. And I can even use my leader ability to boost the unit if it's at one power, so I still have options. Now they're still boosting their own power, and they get Sunset Wanderers out. Ooh, that is really good bleeding-wise. No leader ability, Sunset Wanderers out. Oh boy. Um, and I can do Cat Witcher Saboteur here as well. So I'm going to. So there we go. Hit, hit. And hit. 20 points ahead. With a little bit of investment, obviously. But I didn't invest my leader ability, at the very least, so... I think we're good. Okay, Bear Witcher is gonna hit the squirrel. That is gonna have to be... a lot of points. But they're gonna get their sihil further if I let them do this. Um, I'm gonna Dennis. And then use one needed ability charge here. There we go. I'm really overplaying here, it's 30 points ahead. Yeah, but at least we got the pass and they can't use the lead ability twice. Because they didn't remove the doomed on Arnjolf. Okay, we won the round there and I think I can just keep going. Because I can get Nickers out. Uh, we also got the resilience there. And I got a few making a bomb, so... Seems like a fair deal. Dwarven Skirmisher is always tough. Um, I'm gonna quickly check what I still have. I still have a lot of special cards in my deck though, and I really want to get Erendite. Don't need making a bomb, yeah, let's go with the Berserker. So I could do Arcane Tome, I think I'm just gonna go with the Berserker, just going on the field. I wanna keep boosting that Erendite. If that means pushing, then I'll be pushing. There's been a few content creators that make this deck uh, as popular as it is right now. Uh, that's gonna hit Zoltan. Fair enough, I guess. Ornate Sensor is not gonna work here, but I could... No, even making a bomb isn't gonna work here. I'm gonna get one more um, tick on Erendite here with this. And Nikus gets out as well. And we finally get Sihil here. If we're really lucky with the uh, the rain, we could still get some damage out. Uh, but I'm guessing not. Okay. Uh, we actually do. Uh, which is perfect, because that means that I can use Arcane Zone to get a making a bomb out. And then move the Uncreate Longship in the back. And then hit Fukushia, or Fukusha, and do this. There we go. There is a two power unit on the board now, so Sihil can still keep rowing. 
Uh, but they're not going for it. They're not going for it. Um, but I think this is as far as I'm going to push it. Um, there's not nothing for me to grow. I could still try and do this. But it's a bit of a big investment here. Uh, since I didn't use Arendite. If I use Sultan's Company, I need to use Munro as well. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at this. And now they don't have the chance to put Sihil up even further. So unless they actually want to, but no, they're not going to. There we go. Lost that round. One card down. That doesn't need to be the end of the world, though. Because uh, Gerd is out of the way, which is good. What I really want here is Ornate Sensor and Dwarven Chariot. Now, if I don't get Milva at my next pull, I'm just going to have to stop. And I also don't know what I would prefer to replace. Making a bomb is a risk, so I'm just going to get... Nah, okay. Okay, let's finish redrawing. That is annoying. So that means... Although I can do Sultan's Company. Yeah, I'm going to do Sultan's Company. That doesn't take the hits. That still boosts Arendite up to 12. Yeah, it's not 13. The Raiders, I can actually... Just counting here. So if I... I need 6 for the Raiders. Yeah, I'm just going for Munro here. Um, and then just do 1, 2, 3. I'm going to leave it at that for now. So now I can kill the, the Raiders. There we go with the two power hits. No blutter, so they don't get the, uh, the hit immediately there. Could Aaron die now just to block them from getting any more um, value out of that? I can keep this up, so... Although that's going to get hit by that longship. I don't want that. Um, it's going to get... Ah, wait a second. Yeah. Does this move? No, it doesn't move. Okay. Fair enough. I was hoping because it says it moves it, but it didn't move it. Fair enough. I'll be able to kill it next turn. Uh, they can now kill the uh, the saboteur and get another Sihil out. Draw a card, then play a card. And there we go. Pure Stark Invader. So that was 12 points. I need to kill the ship now. So I'm going to move the Uncreate Raiders, kill the longship, and then move the Raiders again. There we go. And kill the Raiders here. And then put the Berserker down. And that's six more points of damage. And Arendite keeps growing. Not a real easy way for them to use Sihil now, because I think Sihil is at three. Or is it at four now? It could be at four. It's at two. Oh, of course, because they use an order ability with the Raiders there. Um, so that lost them Sihil because they didn't get the death blow. So yeah, this is over. And that's the problem with Sihil. If you don't have any targets in the final rounds, then that card it just basically becomes useless. And there we go, first deck of the season, and I got almost to rank 2. I'm one game away from rank 2, so I'll probably uh, finish this off, off uh, recording. Uh, but this is a very, very powerful deck. Um, if you really want to get going into the ladder really quickly, right now, especially with all the Sihils flying around, then this check deck is just perfect for you. Because uh, as you saw with those last two matches, uh, Sihil players do not stand a single chance against this deck, because we can just block all their attempts of uh, trying to get our units down to one power or something close to it. Um, we also have, of course, resilience with Sultan, and Erendite is still the powerhouse that it's always been, even though we've never been able to properly use it because um, our opponent passed beforehand. But there we go. The entire list, you can find that in the description. Um, there's a link to the Play Grant website where you can import it into your own game and try it out. If you have any feedback on the deck, please let me know, because uh, remember that's what we're here for, after all, trying to help each other out. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the Dancing Dwarfs deck, because uh, I'm really, really enjoying as well. Remember, this is a deck that was created internally at Team Elderblood, so all credit goes to my teammates. Um, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll, uh, I'd like to see you in the next episode of Gwentech or any of the streams. So thank you enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye. Stay nutty.